So basically this is our question. We have a wheel which is mounted on this particular axis. It's free to rotate about this particular axis. The radius of the wheel is R and the mass of the wheel is M and there is some charge which is uniformly distributed over this particular wheel and the charge per unit length is given to be lambda and a magnetic field a uniform magnetic field exists in this region into the plane and the radius of the region in which this magnetic field exists is basically A and the magnitude of magnetic field is B naught. So when this magnetic field is switched off this wheel starts rotating we have to find the direction of the rotation and the angular velocity of the wheel. So let's draw a loop this blue loop which is coinciding with the rim of the wheel. and we can find the flux change through this particular loop we can say that the initial flux through this particular loop of this blue loop is going to be b dot a b initial dot a a is the area vector so let's assume this area vector is into the plane let's assume that the area vector is into the plane so we have initial flux being b naught pi a square why not pi r square because magnetic field in this region is actually zero in this region is zero so you have initial fluxes b not pi a square after the switching of this magnetic field the final flux through this loop is going to be zero because there is no more magnetic field in this particular region so we can say that our emf is induced over this particular loop and the EMF induced EMF induced over this magnitude of EMF induced over this particular loop is going to be rate of change of magnetic flux over this loop that's going to be B naught pi a square over T where T is the time in which your magnetic field goes from B naught zero it's given in the question that it suddenly switched off but let's assume that it takes time t to go from b naught to zero so this is the magnitude of emf induced over this particular loop now flux is actually decreasing over this particular loop magnetic flux is decreasing so direction of emf induced should be such that this direction should be such that it should oppose the flux change so since magnetic field is decreasing we can say that the direction of induced magnetic field should be something like this into the plane so that it supports the decreasing magnetic field so we can put our right hand thumb in the direction of B induced and the direction of the curl of our fingers give us the direction of induced EMF so our induced EMF should be something like this this should be a direction of induced EMF now this is one way of writing Faraday's law Faraday's law can be written as d phi by dt is equal to integral of e dot dl over this particular loop we can say some electric field is induced over the loop and the direction of induced electric field should be in this particular direction this is the direction of electric field induced EMF induced can be thought of as due to some electric field and that electric field is your induced electric field 
now if this rim if this loop had a conductor over it then we can say that the free charges on that conductor are going to experience some force and some current would flow in this particular direction but it's given that this loop or rather this rim is non-conducting and has some charge Q over it then we can say that the small small charges over the rim let's say this is your DQ charge it's going to experience some force in this particular direction that's that being your key DQ into E this small charge is going to experience a force in this particular direction that's going to be DQ into E and we can say that this rim experiences a torque about this center C due to force experienced by the small small charges due to induced electric field and this electric field this force is going to produce some torque in which direction in clockwise direction and that's going to rotate this particular wheel we can say that the magnitude of induced electric field from this particular equation from this green equation we can find the magnitude of induced electric field we can say electric field induced into 2 pi capital R that's your our this part that should be equal to B naught pi a square over t from this particular expression we can find the magnitude of induced electric field and now we can say this small charges are going to experience a clockwise torque the net torque on wheel in clockwise direction in this particular direction is going to be integral of dqe into the perpendicular distance that's going to be r now this net torque is going to be lambda into 2 pi r that's our net q into electric field induced which which we have already calculated from this upper part this is going to be b naught pi a square over t into 2 pi r this is our electric field into my r now this is our net torque on this wheel in clockwise direction that should be our moment of inertia about center C this is your net torque on the wheel in clockwise direction about a particular point which point about C this is our axis now this is our fixed axis of rotation we can say torque net is equal to I about F A over alpha that's going to be our I is our moment of inertia about C into alpha alpha is going to be final angular velocity minus initial angular velocity over T and this moment of inertia this is given to be a ring this moment of inertia comes out to be mr square if it were a disk with some charge on the rim then this moment of inertia would have been about the center C would have been mr square by 2 now this T basically cancels out and we can find the final angular velocity of the rim of this wheel about our axis of rotation and the direction of angular velocity is going to be in clockwise direction so we are done with this part and angular velocity comes out to be this omega comes out to be lambda into this 2 pi r 2 pi r cancels out so so does this particular pa r part r and t has also cancelled out your omega final angular velocity is going to be lambda b naught pi a square over mr that's our answer